Well, you made it. Good. How are you? We're good. Good to have you. Thank you. Hey, hey. All right. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Oh, boy, we got a big show for you tonight. I'm really excited about tonight's show. You know why? Because tonight, I get to have all the candy I want. Oh, yeah, babe. Not only that, but I get also to get all my favorite candies. You know why? Because I'm making my own. Yeah. There's going to be candy all over the place when we get done here tonight. And speaking about sweethearts, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Everlast. Your kind of show tonight. My kind of show. Your kind of show tonight. <laughs> Hold on to your marshmallows, folks, because we're making candy right here on Emerald Live. Oh, yeah. Big show. Big, big, big. So uh, let me tantalize your palates a little bit. If you can just kind of, uh, just everybody just close their eyes just for like two seconds and then open them up. They got a whole new attitude now. <laughs> Let's see if this turns you on. I'm going to show you how to make some lemon marshmallows. Oh, yeah, babe. And then, uh, you know those turtles? Oh, we're going to do them orange and almond turtles we're going to do. This really interesting candy called a pineapple lime pate de fruit we're going to do this later on, where you sort of cut it. Really, really interesting. And then one of my favorite simple things to kind of just take out of the refrigerator every now and then is a little buttercream mint we're going to do. Now, it's very, very, can be very, very complicated making candy. I'm talking about at home. I'm not talking about like our friend over there in lilacs in the village who do it every day. But at home, you got to deal with a couple of things. And you might have noticed one of those things today when you got up and you went outside called humidity. <laughs> See? <laughs> you just say that word and things stop bouncing off the walls. Or your hair stands up like that, you know? Anyhow, big, big important thing. The other thing, hey, you gotta have a candy thermometer. It's crucial to make great candies, you gotta have a candy thermometer. You know why? I'm gonna show you why. Let's just say that this is the old candy thermometer right here. And you've got all of these sort of things that start from the bottom and go up, which I'm going to show you. It's crucial. Certain candies need certain stages of cooking. Example, if I wanted to get to a thread, that's what it's called, thread, that would roughly be about 230 to 234 degrees. It basically does something when the sugar bubbles, et cetera, et cetera, at that temperature. We'll get to that later. Let's say I'm uh, making a candy and I need to get it to a softball stage, okay? 234 to 240. Hardball is right at about 250 to 265. And then you got a soft crack, 270 to 290, and a hard crack over 300. Like a praline, well, that takes a little bit different than what I'm going to show you right here with this marshmallow. Here's what we're going to do first. I got my thermometer in a saucepan. And you have to be very careful making candies because you're talking about hot syrups, sugar. Okay? Very, very careful. So what I got, speaking about sugar in a saucepan, I'm going to turn this on right now at about medium high. I have my sugar in there. And then what I'm going to do to that sugar is I'm going to add a little water, 
some corn syrup. Some corn syrup. The key that we want to do here is we want to dissolve the sugar. That's what we're trying to do. And then this particular candy, this marshmallow that we're making, we're going to bring it up to 250 degrees, okay? Little lemon zest, which is going to be for flavor. Now, the other part to this is I have gelatin, okay? You know, you've heard jello, gelatin, jello, gelatin. And I have a little bit of lemon juice. Now, what I want to do is a cooking term called bloom. I'm not making this up. What that is, is that we have to dissolve the gelatin in some sort of liquid. I'm choosing to do lemon juice. But watch how you got to whisk this and whisk it and whisk it. And as it starts aerating, which you can start seeing right now, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're blooming the gelatin, which basically means we're dissolving the gelatin so it doesn't have that granule taste inside of the lemon juice. Are you with me so far? Yes. Whew, what a class. <laughs> Unbelievable. And so is Doc Gibbs and the Emma Live Band. Stay with us. <laughs> Making a few candy treats tonight. Thanks for joining us. And if you're just joining us, we had the gelatin and lemon juice that I dissolved. Now I have it inside of the bowl, sort of on small heat. Look, we're, get, we're trying to get to that 250 mark. I'm at about 230 right now. Buck, can you get a shot of this? I'm going to turn it around. Huh? Beautiful. So it's very, very crucial to keep an eye on this now on that 250. What's even more crucial is that when we're ready at 250, we've got to start slowly drizzling that syrup, that hot syrup, into this gelatin mixture. And I figured we would uh, kind of give that little marshmallow uh, a little yellow hint. So I have a little uh, lemon yellow citron. Wow. He's bilingual, too. <laughs> so, we're going to just put a few drops of that in there. That looks pretty good to me. Then on this little, uh, this little, uh, sheet pan here, what I've done... Oh, yes, indeed. I've, uh, just sprinkled a little powdered sugar like this. See, there's that humidity again. And uh, cut that on the sheet pan. All right, now, we are, we are, well, Buck, take another peek. We are so close. <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, come on, baby. Well, that's the thing. You see, when you really cook on a show, you know, that's what happens. And we're cooking on this show. Yeah. All right, Buck, you can see it with your own eyes now or with that eye there. It is at 250 right now. So, number one, be very, very careful about taking the thermometer out, okay? Again, like I said, hot syrup, dangerous. Next thing, we're gonna kill the heat and we're gonna pray. You gotta slowly start adding the syrup. Thank you, Doc. 
That would be some adding syrup music by Doc Gibbs. Now, you're going to see in a second, folks. You see on the outside of that, all the crystals? You see that? That's how fast sugar makes candy. The key to this now, what we got to do, as I'm raising it up, this has got to expand about three times that volume for it to be marshmallow. Just getting to cooling it down and we're aerating all that stuff. And that's what's happening right here with the marshmallow. Now, turtles. You got chocolate turtles. You got that caramel thing inside there. I'm gonna flavor mine with a little orange. Let me show you how we do this now. First step is that we're gonna take some condensed milk and again some corn syrup and basically now some sugar there's that humidity again oh yeah babe probably go outside later my car will be stuck to the pavement out there you know All right, so now we got this, the heat going on. We got our thermometer in place. We got condensed milk, we got the sugar, and we've got corn syrup. Now, we wanna dissolve this. Once the sugar is dissolved, the next step that we're gonna do to that is we're gonna add a little bit more condensed milk once it's dissolved. Some vanilla, mmm and a little bit of butter. See, are you starting to feel the love in here right now with the candy? You know? It's like, you know, we got sugar, we got corn syrup, we got butter. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful. All right, we're checking on that. That's coming along just fine. When that comes up to volume, just so that you know, we're gonna take that, put it on that sugared baking sheet, and then I'm just gonna sort of, it'll be cool enough, I can press it a little bit with my hands as I dip it in a little water, dip it in a little sugar, I can press it down. And then, when we come back, I'm gonna show you how you cut them, and then of course, how you eat them, <laughs> and then we're gonna finish the turtles. So don't touch the dial, we'll be right back. Doc Kids with the end of the live How many uh, folks in the uh, audience have made divinity? Anybody made divinity? That's the kind of a, you've made divinity? God bless you. <laughs> Only one in the whole audience. And me. The last time I made it, I broke my spatula. Went right inside. I did, Doc. I'm not joking about things like that. The, the top of the spatula went off. Wow. See, this marshmallow, this is marshmallow, you gotta keep I broke a machine one time. I, that, that's how it is, right? It gets, you gotta try to get all the air and it gets all really thick. Well, I guess you had to been there. I, <laughs> it's a lot of work, I just gotta tell you. Marshmallow. Like so uh, we whipped it three times the size. I've pressed it in there. Now we wanna let this set. Before I do that, I sprinkle a lot of powdered sugar. I told you also that if we needed to spread this a little bit, we could. See how. Look at the consistency of that. Now the key is to let it is to let it harden overnight. I put a little plastic wrap over it. Then 
Our mixture is on the stove. We're trying to, I added more condensed milk, not the butter and the vanilla. I'm trying to, I'm looking now for like around the 240 temperature before I add the butter and the vanilla. And what we're making right here, folks, basically for these turtles, before I finish the lemon marshmallow, is caramel. Okay, that's what we're, that's what we're doing here. We're making caramel. Condensed milk. Okay. Next day comes, you're in the mood now for some lemon marshmallow. You can take it out of the pantry. Another trick that I want to share with you. Before you add the marshmallow in the pan, I sugared it. It's a great idea. It's going to come out. It'll wash. It may take a few weeks, but <laughs> line it with plastic wrap then powdered sugar, because what you can do is you can always do this move here. And then you're not worried so much about your, your pan. You see that? Wow. Oh, yeah, babe. This is Emerald Live. <laughs> now, then you can cut them in squares. <laughs> If it gets a little sticky like that, that looks like a good marshmallow square. Starts getting sticky. See, oh, look. That's when you got to dredge them back inside the powdered sugar like this. Okay? So now you have them like that. If you let them get a little hard, they're absolutely fantastic. And this is what you have. Lemon marshmallow. Oh, yeah. Now, let's go back to the turtles now that we got the lemon marshmallow under control. Ladies, it's coming. I can see it in their eyes. All right. Back to the turtles, Ricky. You ready? Here we go. Watch. All right. When I get this to 240, it's going to start changing that color. As I said, that's when I'm going to add the butter and the vanilla in here. 240. At 240, the caramel is workable. So I have this pan, okay? And in this pan, I have sprayed it with some vegetable. And let me show you the caramel now. What you're going to do is on that, you're going to just kind of spread. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to spread it with a spatula, I kind of like them kind of clumpy like that myself. So you get them clumpy, because that's what a turtle is, right? It's the caramel that's the whole thing. All right, so now you do the caramel part. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I put the almonds, okay? Yeah, I don't get fancy. I mean, trying to make a turtle, I mean, you know. So I do that. I put the almonds. And then I put some, a little bit of dry fruit in some of them. You know, like orange, lemon, really good, okay? So we got the caramel down. We got the old almonds and the dry fruit. When we come back, I'll show you how to top them, and then we're going to kick it up. Another notch! Yeah. Yeah.
Emerald Live Band, folks. Yeah. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, shame on you. I'm Emerald Lagasse. We're making candy treats tonight. And uh, we've got the awesome lemon marshmallow that we just went out there. We're getting ready to finish a little orange and almond turtle in just a second before we move over to a delicious pineapple pate. Uh, but hey, folks, give it up for Cliff on keyboards, huh? Yeah. We've got Lewis, Mr. Lewis on the horns. <laughs> the amazing Sir Charles on bass. And Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. My good friend Doc Gibbs is in the house. So I uh, started melting some chocolate, white chocolate on the break. And uh, you don't want to kind of get this too hot when you're tempering or melting chocolate. 110 degrees should be enough to do the trick. Want to make sure that water's not too, too high if you're using a water bath like this. Somebody asked me if uh, you could make candy like we've made in a microwave. Good thought. Doesn't work. Because, you know, when you're making candies, you're working with uh, these syrups. And they've got to come to these high temperatures in order to do what they're going to do. In a microwave, it's a mess. You probably will never get the door open. <laughs> so, once we did the caramel, we did the uh, almond little orange peel with the white chocolate. We just go in and finish it. Oh, you could, could do dark chocolate. So then, once they cool, then it's the fun part of eating. Yeah. Has anybody tried the marshmallow? Yeah. How is it? Delicious. All right. Okay, so then we let the chocolate get hard. And uh, then they sort of look like this when they are hard. A little spatula like this, you want to get underneath the caramel. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> kind of get under the caramel like that. Boy, it is humid today. And I just kind of garnish them, folks, with maybe a little candy, candied orange or whatever. And... Uh, some of those toasted almonds, and uh, put them out for you, your guests, your family. There you have it, a little homemade turtles. <laughs> Guys are right over here with the marshmallows. All right, so uh, I told you about this pineapple pate thing. Um, I happen to love fresh pineapple, which is, uh, I went downstairs to the market. Hey, what'd you think of that market down there, huh? It's pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> Basically bought a really, really beautiful ripe pineapple, took the outside, the top, the bottom, took the core out of the center of it. You can smell. <laughs> That's a lively one. <laughs> you can smell when the pineapple is ripe. You go in the store and you get about uh, a couple of feet away from a good ripe pineapple. By feeling it, you'll know as well. The color will get, already start getting hints of orange and yellow on the outside. And you pick it up and you can smell that it's ready to go home. Now, I took a little casserole, lined it with some plastic wrap. And then what I want to do is I want to take our pineapple now. Just sort of puree that. While that's happening in the saucepan here, uh, I'm going to add our sugar. <laughs> hey, it's really, that's what it is. It's the humidity. It's pretty humid today. That's why people like to make candies more in the wintertime than in the summertime. That's why people go crazy around the holidays. They're like baking and doing all kinds of great things with candies and fruitcakes and all that stuff because you don't have to worry too much about 
the humidity that time of the year in these pots. Now, that was the juice of a couple of limes. That's the zest of some lime. And I just sort of want to whisk that just a little bit. Now we want to dissolve that sugar. While that's dissolving, what we're going to do now is we're going to take that delicious pineapple that we pureed, and we're going to add that in here. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, another crucial step for this particular thing, we want to make sure we got it all dissolved and we're bringing that up to temperature. You might say, well, what is going to make that thick? What is going to make that candy? See, it's thick, but it's not candy. Well, that's when you use this next ingredient called pectin. Pectin's used for a lot of canning, a lot of jams and jellies will have it. Sort of just keeps it all together if you use pectin. So what I do is take a little granulated sugar, and then I'm going to use like about four ounces of pectin. You with me? Yeah. Then we're going to dissolve the sugar in the pectin. And then while this is starting to come up to temperature, what we're then going to do now is we're going to add the pectin to this. Now this is going to get really pretty thick. What's going to make it really thick beside the pectin is that we've got to cook this now. It's like a syrup, we've got to cook it down. As we're cooking it down, it's reducing. Evaporation happens, the water's coming out. Concentration of flavors are happening as it reduces down. Makes sense, right? Okay, so our pineapple is on the stove. When we come back, I'll show you what that looks like, and then another terrific candy. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Let's rock it. really cooking up some candy here tonight. All right, so back to the pineapple. As it reduces and reduces slow, you slowly want to turn down the heat to a good medium, medium low. Once it starts coming to a boil, you want to reduce this because it's got to get really thick. The pectin's going to get it thick, but that pineapple, as it reduces down and gets all of that concentration in flavor is fantastic. Then, when it gets to that point, and it's really more eye now and feel than it is temperature with this particular candy. So you saw how much it was. Now look how much it's reduced down to. You see that? So it kind of looks like a candy. I got the heat on super low. When you get it at that nice consistency, and again, folks, don't panic. You can go right on that www.foodnetwork.com over to the Emerald page <laughs> and we'll give you all of that uh, information that you need about all that stuff. So don't call 911 and stress out. <laughs> now, what we want to do now, I wish you could smell this. I mean, we can smell it here in the studio, but at home. All right, so we want to get it all out of the saucepan here. Now, the thing that we want to do, a couple of secrets that I'm going to give you right now. Okay, one, we want to flatten this down as much as we can. 
while it's still really nice and warm. Number two is you really got to let this particular candy set. Now, we had some questions during the commercial break of whether you could do this with other fruit. Absolutely. The only thing is, different fruits take on different measurements of pectin, so you have to check that out. Some fruits have a lot more pectin than others, naturally, okay? So um, you got to keep that in mind, and I guess you can go on that pectin.com uh, thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> These days, you know. <laughs> true, Doc. I believe you. So here's the thing. You cover it up. What I do is I just forget about it for a day, even two days. Just keep it in a cool, dry place and forget about it. Then when you're ready, you can see that it's not going to fully harden all the way. It's still going to be a little pliable. That's the whole reason for this madness here. How's the humidity in Maryland where you're from right now? It's humid. It's humid. Yes. You're a New Jersey girl. Yes. We got the New York girls over there. <laughs> New York. And my friends over here came all the way from Texas, from El Paso. <laughs> right. right? El Paso. Fantastic. So here you go. We uh, take the plastic out. All right, we've got that far. And then we flip this over, take that out. And then basically what you can do is you just cut these little squares. You see that? I hope you're getting this, Buck. <laughs> then we'll come this side. We've got these little squares now. All right, now that we've got all them, I have granulated sugar here, unhumidified. <laughs> and then we're going to take one and we drop it in there. Take one, we drop it in there. Drop it in there. Drop it in there. Okay, so then you've got to just kind of make them all happy like this. So you can't see how happy they're getting really at home, but they're getting happy here. I mean, I mean, look at this. Happy. All right, now. Oh, thanks. So then you get one of those and you just kind of put one of those between your cheek and gums. Try that. I know you're a candy freak. You know it. He is. He ain't joking with me. Did you see all the candy out of the freezer the other night? Gone? Gonzo. <laughs> I know. He said, oh, there was a mouse in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Really, really, really good pineapple-y. Rick, try one, buddy. Try one of those. Really dense, dense chocolate. I saw your eye over there, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See how they're, they're a little pliable yet, but they're really just, aren't they delicious? I thought so, too. That's why, I, they're good, huh? It's very intense. Okay, folks, so there you have the little, uh, the little pineapple pate, okay? <laughs> With a handheld mixer. Oh, boy, we're out of control. I want to start creaming this butter. This is a very simple candy. Three ingredients. Butter, sugar, and mint extraction. Once the butter gets really nice and light and fluffy, I'm going to add the sugar in here, and I'm going to add the mint in here, OK? This is one of those things that you can keep in the ice box. That would be a refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to date myself. I'm trying, Doc. <laughs> so, as I was saying, 
Cream it, light, fluffy. It's going to get really good volume. Add the sugar, add the mint extraction. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to roll them and how to eat them. Stay with us. We'll be right back. candy here tonight, and uh, hope you didn't miss those unbelievable pineapple, what's called pate the fruit. Unbelievable. Intense. But um, I, I stopped. I waited for you. I didn't want you to miss this butter mint thing, okay? So I got the butter creamed. Sometimes when you add in quantities of sugar like this, see how difficult, especially in the humidity, right? <laughs> you see how difficult this is? It could be like a disaster or a mess, you know? So you might have seen me sometimes on the show, I kind of put it in parchment paper, and then I just sort of use the both sides like that and go to the mixer, especially like that. It works great. This also works for rolling up the candy when it's done. Although I'm going to use plastic wrap, you could use parchment as well. Now, I have that in there, and I've got just a little bit of the pure mint, which... These pure extractions, make sure they're pure. Uh, you can get all kinds of them. You know, there's orange, there's orange flower, there's you name it. Vanilla, peppermint, obviously lemon. It just goes on and on and on. So could you use this technique of making this butter mint into another candy? By adding orange extraction, you'd have an orange mint or an orange candy, right? or if you added lemon. So it doesn't just have to be the peppermint. All right, now, we're back here, and uh, I'm going slow first, because I like these people. <laughs> Don't want to, you know. You got to get it all incorporated in here with the butter, the sugar, and the mint. And then before you start rolling it, just give it a quick little taste to see if it's got enough mint flavor for you. So as this just keeps going on and on and on, and the butter starts incorporating with the sugar, it takes about 15 minutes, basically, to incorporate this. Starts coming together, coming together, and it gets just like, almost like a cookie dough. Now, you with me so far? Yeah. All right. What I like to do Getting a headache over here. <laughs> Just kidding. So what I like to do, once this all comes together, then I like to divide that into two batches, into two rolls, if you will. Because why, why not? Because like I said, this is a perfect thing. You can keep this in the icebox. As long, that would be refrigerator. <laughs> as long as it's rolled and kept tight, it's going to stay in there a week, two weeks. I mean, you got to be careful. I mean, it could go longer, but, you know, with all the patrol police out there these days, you know, <laughs> butter police, candy police, I divide it in half. I put it right inside of the plastic wrap, and I roll my mint, my butter mints in here. Okay? Now, when I'm ready... I go in the ice box, I take out a roll. See? Then, I need some candies. Somebody just dropped in. You, don't, you know the drill. Just think of yourself being lucky that it was just candy. Good thing it wasn't the meatloaf, right? <laughs> the easy way, folks, is this. I cut a little piece off, 
I sort of in my hand, just kind of the heat of my hand is just going to make them happy a little bit. Okay. And then I just sort of like do that. And then just with a fork, okay, you can just sort of make little decorations like that, okay? Then as they start getting a little more room temperature, that's when they're really, really going to get delicious. So again, you just sort of cut one. Ooh. <laughs> ah. You know. And then you just kind of just do that. And then with the fork. Now, and that's how simple it is. Now, when I have, you know, when you need to do a, like a plate of these things, like when you're coming over the house, <laughs> then what I do is I get a little plate like this. And then if you want to just sort of jazz it up a little bit, you know, you could always just sort of sprinkle some of them with a little cocoa like that, okay? That works. And you can also just share it with a little bit of mint. And there you have it. Butter mint. I hope you all had a good time tonight, folks. And I want to thank you for joining me. I'm Emeril Lagasse. I'll see you next time.